Good evening, kids. Uh, good evening, parents, uh, the school administrations. This is our second Paul Morphy's game. Again, Paul Morphy was a chess player here from the United States. Uh, and um, he was from New Orleans, very um, talented chess player. Now, let's see this game. He played with Alonso for Morphy. I assume this could be his brother or, um, or a cousin. Um, again, they are playing with a full chess set. That means that maybe Alonso was a good chess player. Right, so let's see. To pull Morphy, uh, open his game with the e4 and e5. Now we have this move pawn to f4. This is called in chess a king's gambit. Gambit means you give one or two pawns, and for those pawns, you are going to get open files, open. Uh, diagonals you may get some attack on the king right um, maybe your queen is going to get activated right uh, but you have to get something you have to remember this pawn is really not for free right because nobody wants to give pawn for free right you get something now what do you get here uh, the white is hoping that this bishop is going to go to c4 and knight to f3. And then later, when you make a castling, that this rook is going to be more open and make an attack on pawn on f7. Right Now, there are some disadvantages with this move. And the biggest disadvantage is that those diagonals are open. Right? So the white king also can get into the trouble on the diagonals. Let's see what was the move. Now, black can accept the gambit by taking on f4 or maybe taking some counterattack with a d5. Alonso captured on f4 and bishop goes to c4. We will see many other games where white played like knight f3. Queen h4, check. So the king, king is already in a little trouble. Right, so he has to move. And a good place for a king is on f1. This is the, probably the safest place. There are some games where you can see king goes to e2, or king f1 is probably safer. Now, in bishop c5, black clearly wants to make a checkmate, right? Um, but it's easy to block this checkmate just by playing pawn to d4. And black moves the bishop back. And now another move that forces black queen to retreat. So look what happened. In just two moves, black had to retreat the pieces. The bishop goes to b6, queen goes to e7. White developed very nicely. And uh, the only problem that white has is this king on f1. Now, it's not that king is so insecure here. It is the rook that, that cannot get into the game. That's the problem. If white can solve that problem, then game will be okay. Now, knight goes to c3, protects the pawn on e4, and sometimes this knight could jump to d5, attack the queen. So, knight f6. Black is developing the pieces and at the same time attacking the pawn on e4. Queen d3 protects the pawn. Pawn to c6. And bishop takes on f4. Now, this idea c6 and d5, you will say, probably not the best idea because it is opening the black king. So black decides to play d5 and um, yeah for sure the bishop is open right the bishop on c8 but the king is still in the center of the board so this line could be very unpleasant if the rook gets to e1 that's going to be very 
difficult for black to defend. So the king is not in a good position. So white takes the pawn and white is threatening to bring this rook to e1 and attack the queen and the king. So the black runs away to the castling position, but this pawn now on d5 becomes a very unpleasant pawn. Attacks the queen and uh, it is supported by the bishop on f4. Very, very unpleasant piece. Right, so, so the things did not go well for black here. And especially because black has all those pieces not developed, right? So black moves back with a queen and rook e1. This is a nice logical move, right? You are bringing the rook to e5. See, the rooks are supposed to be on open lines, right? Not on closed lines. So, for instance, um, if you would um, bring the rook to c1, that doesn't make any sense, right? Because the rook is blocked with the pawns. But here, on open file, a rook can attack. Rook e8. Right? Black is offering a trade. And I can understand that because the rook on e1 is very powerful. But then at the same time, there is this pawn on f7 that is very weak. Pay attention to this pawn, right? And that pawn is weak in many games that, that we um, analyzed and we did see. Like uh, even if you remember the short games from beginners uh, to level, checkmate on f7 happens all the time. So now white is going into the attack. Knight g5. The pawn on f7 is attacked. Rook takes, king takes. Now the question is, is this white king in trouble here? Yes or no? The answer is no. Because black doesn't have enough pieces attacking this, this, this king. Black pieces are not deployed, and that's why this king is okay. Now, at the same time, the black king is not okay, because black king doesn't have enough pieces to defend pawn on f7, and uh, in general, the, the whole black uh, king side is quite weak. So, black plays queen e8 check. And look at the next move, king to d2. Now, Paul Morphy decides to play king to d2 because this is the safest place for a king. Uh, uh, better than to go, let's say, to f2 because there, then there maybe knight is going to attack the, the king. King d2 is great. And Paul Morphy is preparing to bring the rook to e1 and have an open file attack. Bishop e6 and rook e1. So the attack is very strong and there is no way black can stop this attack. Look, bishop is attacking the bishop, knight is attacking the bishop and rook is attacking the bishop. So that's a very powerful attack. Knight e7 and look how, how Paul Morphy finishes the game very nicely. He takes this bishop with a knight. And now, instead of playing check, he takes with a rook, and he's actually hiding this bishop, right? So, so it's going to be, he's preparing for a, for a double check, right? Now, queen is attacked, queen moved, and the next move, rook e8, checkmate. That's it. So... A very nice, short, beautiful games. Let's see what did we learn from the game. Let's go back and find the most important ideas. First, we learned King's Gambit. Right? This is an opening 
that is quite dangerous after this game. Maybe you should try. Pawn takes. Bishop here, right? I mean, clearly we are learning some ideas here that king doesn't have to be in a castling position. Paul Murphy put his king on f1 and then developed the pieces. And look how nicely he's pushing the black pieces back and then developing even the queen here, right? I think that the, this is what we need to remember right now. Look at that move. Pawn goes to d6. I think this is a very important move to remember, right? Because this pawn actually helped a white to win the game. Black had a lot of problems developing the chess pieces. And then, of course, we have to remember a move like this. Rook e1, right? Rook comes to the open line and rook is ready to go to e7 and attack the pawn on f7, right? Very important to rook. Strong, powerful rook. Strong, powerful pawn on d6. And the white pieces very nicely developed. All of them. If you pay attention to white pieces, they are all developed. If you look at the black pieces, they are not playing. And then attack on f7. And rook e1. That's another move we have to remember. And now knight capture on c6, e6 and checkmate okay boys and girls uh, i hope you enjoyed the lesson and um, you can see those games on your own if you go to and watch us kids uh, website uh, you can find paul morphy here in intermediate uh, one you just click study and learn on Lee Chess and you are going to find those games or uh, when I record the videos, you can click here on the videos and see the videos. Okay, I hope you enjoyed uh, the lesson and uh, see you in our next one. Bye-bye.